Hello again, I am Blunty. Desk full of computer components because I am building a new computer. In fact, it's going to be the computer that replaces this devil's crevice back here. Your regulars around here will remember the uh, series of build log videos we did about this system. Well, I need to build a new system. Not because Devil's Crevice isn't powerful enough, it's still plenty powerful enough to run all the games I want to run and all that kind of stuff, but the things I've been doing in the, with the channel, well frankly I've hit a few walls on this system that I didn't anticipate hitting this quickly. Uh, for example, a recent graphics card review I had to do, I had to physically bend the, the frame of the case out to get it to fit in there, because I did. I, I deliberately, I wanted to build a very compact system, so I built a very compact system, that kind of bit me in the ass, because I didn't think I would be doing as many graphics card reviews as quickly as I wound up doing. So one of those things I didn't anticipate happening. It's a good thing because, you know, I've had a lot of fun doing all that sort of stuff and it gives me an excuse to build on your system quicker than I thought I would. And I love building systems. So, and one of the other problems is uh, I built this to be sort of camera friendly because I wanted to have back here, you know, behind me when I'm on camera and stuff, you often see it, you know, on camera. But the the, the, the plastic window sort of reflects more than I thought. The camera doesn't see through it that well and, and just, you know, I can get really, really nice shots of this, and I have taken really, really nice shots of this, but when it's just generally on camera, it doesn't look as good as I hoped it would. So one of the things I wanted to do with the new build is make a very camera-friendly build, and it's going to look awesome on camera. Wait till you see, wait till you see, it's got to, I mean, I haven't built it yet, but in my head, it looks magnificent. This will also be my first time with a custom water-cooled hardline solution, so I'm excited to get hands-on with that. I've been wanting to do that for years and years and years. It's, it's just very interesting and, you know, just another piece of the nerd skill set that I want to build up and test out and try and have fun with and, you know, there, there, there are basically lots of lots of little reasons why why I'm rebuilding a system or building a new system much faster than I anticipated replacing Devil's Crevice. But building PCs is kind of like getting a tattoo. Once you do one, you're kind of always thinking about the next one to do. So that's what we're going to do. So in today's video, I'm going to take you through the componentry I've chosen, which components I'm bringing from this system into the new system, which ones I'm replacing completely, what components I've chosen and why. And... Well, enough of me waffling to the camera. What I'm going to do is get behind the camera and take you through all these components now and strap yourself in because we've got a lot to get through. So, let's see where we're going to start. Well, we'll start here. Alrighty, we'll start with the MOBO. Everything about a PC hangs off, connects to, or is there to merely support the motherboard. And my choice here came down to the Gigabyte Z170X Gaming 7. Now, you regulars may remember I went for a Gigabyte motherboard with my last build, a low-end slash Steam Machine build. In fact, the Z170N Gaming 5 I used there is essentially kind of the baby brother to what I've got here. And that little Gaming 5 has been a superb bit of kit, by the way. I just wish either of the two cases that rig has lived in so far could show off what a very pretty little mini ITX board it actually is. No such problem here, though. As I said, one of the core design choices this time was to show off the bits and pieces at least once the functionality I wanted was satisfied, of course. And I found just such a photogenic bit of kit in the Gigabyte Z170X Gaming 7, which, like the Z170N Gaming 5, was very kindly provided to me for this project by the folks at Gigabyte. As you can see for yourself, it's a clean, sleek-looking board, a nice black PCB, and aside from the basic design touches, like the covering over the I.O. panel, it also has fully customizable RGB LED trace paths and illumination over the I.O. ports, which doesn't just look neat, it actually makes life way easier when you're trying to plug stuff in back there. But of course, while the looks were vital, I wasn't going to compromise on functionality just to get good looks, so the vital tech stuff I wanted is all here too. It's a Z170-based board, of course, which means Skylake CPU with full overclocking abilities. In fact, this board even has a dedicated B-clock chip to push things even further. There's USB 3.1 and the new C-Type connector, enough room for three graphics cards with spacing adequate to SLI 2 big, thick, serious cards, something I just cannot come close to accomplishing in my existing rig. And the PCIe slots have that nice metal reinforced shielding on them, and considering how often I swap in graphics cards for reviews and comparisons and tests and such, that's more than just a an interesting gimmick that's something seriously useful and welcome between those slots there's two dual pcie gen 3 x4 m.2 connections for crazy fast ssds you can even use two of them in a raid configuration if you like i'll let that sink in for a moment imagine that 
<laughs> and of course, it has all the usual enthusiast level features like high end capacitors, twin gigabit Ethernet ports, and you don't even have to decide between Killer or Intel this time around, as this board has one of each. The onboard HDMI port is even HDMI 2.0, so it can pump out 4K at 60 frames per second from your CPU's integrated GPU if you like. Of course, you might be doing 4K 60 frames per second gaming, but for movies and stuff, that's a nice welcome little touch there. And last but not least, I wanted a high-end audio solution, not just so the games sound crispy and lovely, of course they will, but so that my own input from the various microphones that I use while recording and streaming and such can all get a clean as possible audio path. And here we've got a dedicated quad-core audio processor from Creative, high-end audio caps, a hardware switchable gain boost for high-impedance headphones, audiophiles are gonna love that, even an upgradable op-amp chip. That's right, you can switch out the op amp chip yourself that's crazy and if i'm not using the direct audio inputs here and instead go for a usb based audio device i'm covered there too because it has two usb ports with their own super clean and completely isolated power delivery paths to keep the signal super clean and stable and free from any kind of interference from other components on the usb ports and power fluctuations and all that kind of stuff that can cause you issues in short, it's a really nice motherboard. Moving on to the CPU now, my original thought was to just max out everything, so I was going to go for the highest end Skylake i7, a 6700K. But sadly, I had some unexpected expenses present themselves, and this is one of the components I purchased for myself, so I kind of had to compromise here. So instead, I'm going for the top end i5 chip, the 6600K. In practice, this shouldn't really get me a significant boost over the Devil's Canyon i5 4690K, in my existing rig, which is a bit of a shame, it would have been nice to go for that i7, but that said, it doesn't need to really outperform what I already have, as I'm not actually unhappy or bottlenecked with that level of performance anyway. But I do still plan to go full on i7 down the path, but perhaps I'll wait for a refresh or something. Of course, moving to Skylake also means I need new DDR4 RAM. And as you regulars know, I'm a big fan of Kingston's HyperX brand. So when I told them about my plans with this build, they sent me a gloriously monstrous 32 gigabyte kit of their HyperX Predator 3000 megahertz DDR4 RAM. I feel breathless with nerd joy just saying that out loud. I'm gonna do it again. 32 gigabytes of HyperX Predator 3000 megahertz DDR4 RAM. <laughs> You know you're a nerd when that excites you. <laughs> you know what, I think it's going to be a long while before I even touch the sides of that kind of capacity and speed. Certainly puts the comparatively meagre 8 gigabytes of DDR3 RAM I have in Old Devil's Crevice to shame. <laughs> now for permanent storage, I'll be keeping and moving across the main drives I already use in Devil's Crevice. That being a 1TB WD Black 3.5 inch hard drive, which has been general mass storage for me, including most of my games and my gameplay capture recordings from the GeForce share recording function and my HDMI capture devices. In the new rig, it will be dedicated to video recordings only, because for this build, WD have sent me one of their new 3.5 inch WD Blue SSHD 4 terabyte drives. And much like the 2.5 inch WD Blue SSHD drives I used in Little Anvil, this is a hybrid drive with four terabytes of normal hard drive storage, but kicked up the bum with eight gigabytes of SSD storage slapped on top to boost access speeds to frequently accessed data. So, between the vastly upgraded storage capacity and the speed boost of the hybrid system, this will now be my main mass storage and game install drive. Alongside that though, will be the blazingly quick Kingston HyperX Predator M.2 240GB SSD, where, just as I do now on my existing ring, I'll keep the games I'm currently playing that do benefit most from the lightning quick SSD and the load time and asset streaming improvements that brings. Now, not all games benefit significantly from SSD once they're loaded up, but for the ones that do, this is what this monster is for. And believe you me, it makes 
makes a huge difference. So much nicer. Then there's the 2.5 inch HyperX Savage SSD, also 240 gigabytes. And this drive is where my Windows install and most common programs live to make sure this stuff that isn't gaming all keeps running fast and smooth and responsive enough to keep out of my damn way when I am doing the fun stuff. Plus, you know, it looks badass, so it'll be nice to show off in the rig. The case I'm using does have some hidden drive storage, but I think this particular drive I'll put on display. Now for the GPU, no new gear here. There's actually no need for that right now. I'll simply be bringing over my existing Gigabyte Extreme Gaming GeForce GTX 980 Ti. It's a completely brutal card when it comes to performance and this time I'll be able to mount it in a way that actually shows off one of its most visually interesting and cool little party pieces. The three ring illuminated RGB fans on the cooler. In my rig right now, they're facing straight down. You never see them, which is a real pity because they look awesome. But that brings us to the rest of the cooling, specifically the water cooling. This will be my first ever attempt at a custom hardline water cooling rig. And big thanks to Thermaltake for this part of the rig. They came to the party in a big way. Everything I needed top to bottom is from their range. Starting with the Pacific W2 CPU block, which not only looks badass, but by all reports is a superb bit of kit. And it allows for custom color choices for the LED. Not via RGB, but by these little slip-in panels. And of course being able to color match here is kind of important in a showy rig like I'm planning. And I've gone full hog with the radiator. In fact, I've gone past full hog with the radiator. It's an RL480, which is a very large, very thick, high static pressure radiator. And given that I'm only going to be water cooling the CPU, it does seem like a laughably ridiculous bit of overkill, but there is purpose here. I'm not just a newbie making an idiot mistake here. I will explain my reasoning in a moment. But I'm teaming the big rad up with Thermaltake's new RGB ring static pressure fans, which are very quiet, vital for a guy like me who records gameplay and streams games all the while talking over the top of them and such, but they also have RGB illumination in a ring around the frame. And yes, that happens to be very much like the illuminated fans on the Gigabyte Extreme Gaming GeForce GTX 980 Ti I'm using, which should all match up and balance out the light show really very nicely. And that, of course, is one main reason why I'm not water cooling the GPU. Those awesome fans and matching them up with Thermaltake's ring fans was part of the plan since moment one. But also, I'm very frequently switching out GPUs for reviews and testing and comparisons and the like. For my YouTube videos, of course. So liquid cooling the main GPU would make all of that a huge pain in the ass. In practical at best, if not essentially impossible. So now back to why I'm using such a large radiator for just the CPU. And yes, you're of course right, a radiator half this size would do the job even on an overclocked sky like i5 easily. The reason I went overkill big is in fact twofold. One, because the case I'm using will look its best with a rad of this size, and two, because of noise. You see, I'm hoping that a large amount of my cooling needs will be met pretty much passively with just the huge bulk and surface area of this very large radiator itself sitting as it will be in an open air case, which should let me run the fans at very low speeds and thus near silently, even under very heavy loads. I'm also using a very large liquid reservoir, the Thermaltake Pacific PR22-D5 Silent Kit. It has a big 300 milliliter res with a D5 pump included in the kit, and that D5 pump itself having earned a reputation as a well-behaved, reliable, and very quiet pump. This kit also includes the speed control mod, so I can manually adjust the speed of the pump. And again, hopefully with the amount of overkill, a massive radiator, and a large reservoir of towards me, as far as passive heat transfer goes, I will be able to simply leave the pump at its quietest level all of the time as well. That combined with the open air nature of the case, the already surprisingly quiet Gigabyte GTX 980 Ti, the hushed PSU I'm using, this will hopefully all be a ninja quiet rig. At least in theory. We'll see for sure once I've actually built the thing, but I believe my understanding of the thermodynamics at play here is pretty sound. Alongside the main water cooler components, I also have Thermaltake's new V-Tubular PETG hardline tubing, which is nice and large and thick-walled and seems very strong and resilient. And of course, Thermaltake also sent a selection of their fittings, and I went with the chromed ones for a bit of color-neutral bling, but there's also a more subtle black option for all these too. 
I had originally considered just using straight runs and 90 degree corners with fittings. I thought that'd make my life easier as a first timer, but I have since changed my mind and now I'll be bending the PETG tubing myself. So wish me luck on that. I hear it's a bit of an art. And as for the liquid itself, I was going to go for a translucent colour, but Thermaltake suggested I give their brand new opaque coolant a try. So I said, sure, why not? And they sent me a couple bottles of it. And I chose the green as a nice bold complement to the more subtle red, white and black secondary colours throughout the rest of the rig. And of course, I've got RGB all over the rig so I can play with different colour combinations. But the original thought was to have the lights and liquid green, while the red and white serve as a subtle secondary element. Plus also the size and shape of the red has already had me thinking about the TGRI canister, so an opaque green ooze was the final obvious choice there for this 90s nerd. <laughs> Now, back on the subject of the PSU, the power supply for this new build is in fact the same one from Devil's Crevice, the Be Quiet Pure Power L8 600 Watt. I already know it to be a rock solid unit, it's been performing flawlessly in Devil's Crevice ever since I built it, and it lives up to its Be Quiet brand name. However, I do hope, and in fact plan, to switch it out in the future once budget or opportunity allows. I'd like to get something a bit higher capacity in there for some headroom for when I test and review SLI configurations, or indeed the mixed GPU setups that DX12 enables. Plus, I'd like to have something with a 0 dB fanless mode, like how my Gigabyte GTX 980 Ti works, where it just kills the fans completely when it doesn't actually really need them. And I'm in fact kind of hoping that Thermaltake put their RGB ring lights in something around the 750 watt mark. They do already have a PSU with an RGB fan ring, but it's a crazy monster 80 plus titanium 1250 watt beast that, as overkill as most of the rest of my rig already is, I feel like it may be just kind of silly overkill. But a slightly more modest version of this? Yeah, I'd be very interested. The Be Quiet PSU I have isn't modular by the way, but the cable out is fairly tidy and out of the way, so even the short length that will be exposed, as it is in this case, shouldn't be hideous. For the parts that will come back out again from the backside cable routing, like the motherboard connection, the CPU power, the GPU power, and at least one SSD power cable connection, I have purchased some of the same PC case gear branded cable extensions that I used in Devil's Crevice, except with a red, white, and black color scheme this time to match the Gigabyte motherboards colouring, and this time I also got some clear plastic cable combs to help keep them even tidier. And of course the case, as some of you who visit my Twitch streams regularly may already know, it is the Thermaltake Core P5. The regulars here on YouTube may remember this popping up in a couple of other videos of mine. One from an expo last year when Thermaltake first announced it, and another one from a recent NVIDIA NFAN event where a build in this case was on show, which was also where my mind cemented my desire to build in this case. I just, I, I'm compelled to, I have to, I have to build in this case. It's magnificent. It fills all of the tick boxes for what I wanted. Firstly, it's a nice, strong, still construction to put up with me handling a lot as I move in and out of various components for reviews and such. I wanted a big open window, and in this case, the entire front panel is in fact a window, and it doesn't even need it. It looks just as good without it as with, and having it off doesn't expose any ugly sort of connection tabs or mount points or other usually hidden framework that most cases will expose when you take one of the panels off. And of course I wanted full size ATX. And unlike my old case, which I do love, but by its compact nature created problems for me with a few graphics cards I had in for review. On one occasion I had to actually literally bend the steel frame of the case to even get the card in. Here, of course, with the Thermaltake Core P5, I have, for all intents and purposes, unlimited space for even the most obnoxiously large GPU or cooler configurations. Plus, as far as camera-friendly cases for show rigs go, it's extremely difficult to make an argument against the Core P5, isn't it? You can have on show any and every component you like, and all this without sacrificing tidy cable management, as you would with some other open-air benchtop testing rig type case thingies. Now, I'll have more to say on this case once I've actually built in it, but yeah, obviously I'm very excited about this case. 
And oh, as a final touch, I also have a couple of Thermaltake's new magnetic RGB LED strips. I haven't decided exactly how I'll use these in the rig yet, but being magnetic means I can move them about wherever and whenever I damn well please, without the goopy double-sided tape mess that would usually be associated with doing that kind of thing. So again, thanks to Thermaltake for the Core P5 case and all of the water cooling gear, thanks to Kingston for the brutally insane RAM, and to WD for the blue 4 terabyte hybrid drive, and back to where we started, thank you to Gigabyte for the badass Z170X Gaming 7 motherboard, which is just, that's magnificent, isn't it? So there you go, questions, comments, and, and, and follow-ups, and all that kind of stuff, do it in my down below area, as per usual, what was that, that was my CPU, it fell over, up you come buddy, there we go, it's all stacked very precariously, I tried to get as much on display as possible, I think I got everything on camera, except for this, that's not part of the build, that's just to keep my whistle wet, so thanks for watching, I am Bloody. we'll catch you next time, stay tuned for the build logs, um, and sort of tell me what you want to see, tell me what to test. I've got too much caffeine in my system, I need to calm down. <laughs> so this is what I'm doing with my weekend. What are you guys doing? Thanks for watching, I am Blunty, and we'll catch you next time.